ADHDD is reminding Georgians to ask their doctor about alternatives to opioid pain medication. Alternatives such as over-the-counter medications and physical therapy can be used to manage pain. More information at opioidresponse.info. Welcome to the New Georgia Today podcast from GPB News. Today is Monday, January 9th. I'm Peter Biello. On today's episode, the new legislative session begins today, and Georgia's got a $6 billion budget surplus. What will lawmakers do with it? After what we'll call an interesting week at the U.S. Capitol last week, we'll get caught up with a few of Georgia's representatives, and the Georgia Bulldogs take center stage tonight as they take on TCU in the College Football National Championship game. These stories and more are coming up on this edition of Georgia Today. Lawmakers have flocked to Atlanta today for the kickoff of the 2023 legislative session. New leadership in both the House and Senate is creating uncertainty for what may play out this year. GPB's Riley Bunch reports on some of the more prominent and potentially contentious issues the General Assembly is expected to tackle. Georgia state lawmakers are back under the Gold Dome, where they'll spend 40 legislative days tweaking and in some cases completely revamping Georgia's laws. One question that's top of mind is how will legislators spend Georgia's record $6.6 billion budget surplus? A balanced budget is the one bill the General Assembly is required to pass by law. In the wake of the 2022 runoff election, there is also debate on whether or not Georgia should scrap its runoff system, which many argue is too costly and cumbersome. And in a post-Roe v. Wade world, Georgians could see additional restrictions on abortion, like limits on access to abortion medication. For GPB News, I'm Riley Bunch. And as the new legislative session begins, the Georgia Council for Recovery plans to advocate for programs and policies that help those with substance use disorder. GPB's Ellen Eldridge has more on their priorities. Legislative work done during the last session paved the way for establishing standards around sober living houses. A new law now makes kickbacks for referrals illegal. Jeff Breedlove is with the Georgia Council for Recovery. He says what they need now is better regulation of the facilities themselves. Uh, We anticipate that there'll be legislation dealing with putting in some standards or sober living houses, as they're commonly called, Right now, under Georgia law, there are no legal standards. It's kind of a wild, wild west. Breedlove says the council is working with the Georgia Association of Recovery Residences, which is a self-policing volunteer association. For GPB News, I'm Ellen Eldridge. And this programming note, the new legislative session also means the start of GPB's Lawmakers Show, hosted by Donna Lowry. The show airs each night that the General Assembly is in session on GPB TV and on GPB.org at 7 p.m. Things were a bit rockier in Washington last week as the new session of the U.S. Congress got underway. Republicans finally elected a new speaker early Saturday morning after 15 rounds of voting. It also marked the start of Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock's first full term and first terms for freshman Republican representatives Rich McCormick and Mike Collins. GPB's Stephen Fowler caught up with the Georgia lawmakers during their first hectic days in Washington. After facing five elections in two years, the only thing Raphael Warnock has to run for now is meetings and votes on the Senate floor. I'm in his office just before his unofficial swearing-in, where friends and family watched him take the oath of office from Vice President Kamala Harris. It, it for me is the high honor of my life. It is an extension of my lifelong commitment to service, and I'm so glad I get to do it for the people of Georgia for six more years. In his brief time in office so far, he's accomplished many things he's proud of, like capping the cost of insulin for Medicare recipients at $35 out of pocket. And I'm hopeful that now that we've got the election behind us, I might be able to get enough Republicans to work with me to provide a bipartisan path to capping the cost of insulin for folks on private insurance as well. Bipartisanship is the new name of the game in Washington, with Democrats narrowly controlling the Senate, Republicans narrowly controlling the House, and Georgia's reddish-bluish electorate closely resembling the direction of the country. Republican Rich McCormick, who's the new representative for the redrawn 6th District north of Atlanta, says that means his party can't be all or nothing when it comes to legislation. And so we really have some ability to affect real change, but we have to be realistic. We are the minority in the Senate. We are the, we don't have the, 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 the White House. 
So where can we get gains in incremental amounts? When we spoke Tuesday morning before the first day of Congress, he was beyond excited to join such an esteemed body and is eager to use his background as an emergency room doctor to tackle issues like health care, manufacturing issues, and international relations. Uh, if you're talking about medicines and PPE that are all produced in China, people don't realize 90% of the renewable energy sources come from China. 90% of the pharmaceuticals that we use in basic life, such as amoxicillin and augmentin, are created in China. McCormick says Congress needs to be proactive in thinking about the health of the country, literally and metaphorically. Georgia's other new lawmaker, Republican Mike Collins, also has a unique background as a trucking company executive. You don't have to look back any further than a year or two to see the problems that we've had in the supply chain and, and with the pandemic. And so many people really, you see trucks on the road, you see our industry, but you don't know anything about it. He's familiar with politics, calling himself an outsider real close to the inside, since his father Mac was once a congressman too. So I saw what it meant to be able to, to, to serve, to actually put your business to the side, your personal life on hold, and go serve your constituency. And uh, I always thought that was uh, a, a neat thing to do. Georgia's battleground status means all eyes are on the state and the lawmakers who represent it, like Warnock, McCormick, and Collins, so you can expect to see more prominence for the Peach State in this upcoming Congress. For GPB News, I'm Stephen Fowler in Washington, D.C. A trial is set to begin today for rapper Young Thug, who prosecutors say co-founded a street gang responsible for violent crimes and used his songs and social media to promote it. The Atlanta-based artist, whose name is Jeffrey Lamar Williams, was arrested last May after he was charged, along with more than two dozen people, in a sprawling indictment. President Joe Biden will deliver remarks at Atlanta's Ebenezer Baptist Church next Sunday in celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Dr. King served as pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, where U.S. Senator Raphael Warnock is now pastor. The president is scheduled to be here on a Sunday, and although it's a holiday weekend, you may want to consider alternate traffic routes if you're in the area. The number one Georgia Bulldogs are gearing up to take on number three TCU for the National College Football Playoff Championship tonight. The Bulldogs are trying to win a second straight national title, and the Horned Frogs are trying to win their first national title since 1938. Georgia's quarterback Stetson Bennett and TCU's quarterback Max Duggan were both Heisman Trophy finalists. For a little pre-game analysis, we turn to Graham Coffey. He's the co-founder of Bulldog sports analysis site DogsCentral.com. That's D-A-W-G-S Central.com. Graham, thank you very much for speaking with me. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Peter. So it seems like we've got an exciting game ahead of us tonight. Uh, we know the Dogs have had a great season. They've got a 14-0 record. What should fans know about TCU? Yeah, TCU, you know, they're also 14 and 0, I think is the important thing to remember and realize and it's it's really hard to get through a college football season and not lose the game and they've done that to this point. They're, you know, they're a, a smaller private school. They're, you know, in Fort Worth, Texas. It's a it's a Christian university. I think enrollment's about 10,000. So definitely not the normal kind of player that you see on this stage, you know, you normally see the, the big state universities with the, the deep blue blood football traditions, but they've also been underdogs kind of all the way. So this will be a comfortable spot for them. Okay. And these two teams are led by quarterbacks who were Heisman Trophy nominees, Stetson Bennett of the Dogs and Max Duggan of TCU. What can you tell us about this QB matchup? Yeah. So, I mean, both of them are kind of unlikely uh, to, to be in this spot, right? I mean, Bennett, uh, was not even the starter at Georgia uh, two seasons at the you know at the beginning of the 2021 season, and then obviously came in and led them to a national title, and they're 14 and 0 this year. And, and Duggan has a similar path. I played at TCU, but the TCU is coached by a first year head coach, Sonny Dykes, who was hired from from SMU. And when he came to the school, he you know he started someone else in their opener at Colorado. He started Chandler Morris and. Duggan came in late in that game and looked good. And then Morris eventually got hurt a couple weeks into the year. And, and Duggan played so well that he never really gave the spot back. But if you had told any, you know, not just college, casual college football fans, but also, you know, the 
the the most knowledgeable people about the sport that this would be the the quarterback matchup for the national championship game uh, back in August or September. I don't think any of them would have believed you. So are the Bulldogs favored to win tonight? They are. Yeah, they're favored by 13 and a half, which is the, the largest spread that we have seen in a college football playoff championship game in the nine year history of the, the college football playoff. So definitely a large favorite. Um, there have been people that have gone so far as to say that, you know, Georgia and Ohio state last week was, was probably like a national title game just before it because Ohio state and Georgia are comparable rosters. They, they both have a ton of talent for some perspective, you know, Georgia has, uh, 15 five-star recruits on their roster and I believe 54 four-stars. So, you know, almost 70 uh, four- and five-star recruits. TCU in total has uh, one five-star and I believe 14 four-stars. So 15 four- and five-star recruits versus 70 almost. So it, it, there is a very large delta in terms of how these rosters are sort of composed. Well, win or lose tonight, seems like the Bulldogs have a lot to be proud of this season, do they not? Absolutely. They do. Yeah. And, you know, I, that was a, a conversation that, you know, I was having with, with some folks during the game last week when it looked like they were going to lose to Ohio State was, you know, coming off of a national title win and going 13-0 and and losing in, in the college ball playoff. You know, you were one of the four best teams in the sport to get to this point. Now you're, you're one of the two best teams in the sport to get to this national title spot. You just won a national title. So, yeah, Georgia is here to stay. They are, you know, one of, if not the preeminent program in college football right now with, with how they followed up last year's national championship season in terms of being so successful this year. Like, they have definitely put their stamp on the sport and they're here to stay. But I do think that many people in the fan base and, and also within the UGA football program are going to feel like this was an opportunity lost if they are not able to finish the deal tonight. That's Graham Coffey. He's the co-founder of the Bulldogs sports analysis site, dogcentral.com. Graham, thank you so much for speaking with me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Peter. The governors of Texas and Georgia have also gotten into the spirit by placing a friendly wager on the game with some of the best down-home cooking from each state on the line. Hi, Governor Kemp. Is Governor Abbott in Texas. And I bet you some of the best Texas barbecue and a nice cold Lone Star beer that TCU will take home the national championship and beat Georgia. Go Frogs. Governor Abbott, Governor Brian Kemp of the great state of Georgia, I want to let you know I'm accepting your wager on the game tonight between TCU and Georgia. Looking forward to the dogs claiming their second national championship in a row. Just in case we don't get to enjoy that Texas brisket and Lone Star beer, we'll send you some Jackson, Georgia's own fresh air barbecue, chopped pork, and stew if TCU wins. It's going to be a great game. I'll see you there. Go dogs! And a final note on the national championship tonight, there are watch parties scheduled to take place all over the state. The University of Georgia will host its official watch party at Stegman Coliseum. Also in Athens, the Georgia Theater and Authentic Brewing Company are hosting events. You can join UGA alumni to watch the game in Atlanta at Dr. Scofflaw at The Works, in Columbus at Wild Wing Cafe, and in Savannah at Starland Yard. And those are just a few of the places to watch and enjoy the national championship tonight. And that is it for today's edition of Georgia Today. We are happy to be part of your daily news diet. To better serve you, tell us what you'd like to hear more of, less of, or tell us whatever else is on your mind. Email us. The address is georgiatoday at gpb.org. And for more news from GPB, go to gpb.org slash newsletters and sign up for the Georgia Today newsletter. I'm Peter Biello. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you tomorrow.